たと思うんで。はい。Today we're going to talk a little bit about、uh, the analysis of cross-tab data. And at first it seems complex, but if you break it down into little steps, it really is not. And again, your pause button on that DVD might be very helpful. Cross-tab data、uh, that I have here, for example, is taken from a national sample based upon a questionnaire. In which they had several thousand people from across the United States, and they asked them, they were chosen in a way that was either random, in this case it was really a, a different system, but essentially it shows you that people were selected to be representative of, of everyone in the United States who was 18 and over. And they wanted to find out if there was a relationship statistically using association data, kind of like correlation, but not exactly the same,、uh, And put it in a cross tab table, they wanted to find out was there a relationship between how often people attend religious services and whether they report being very happy, pretty happy, or not too happy. Now, this is questionnaire data, so it's open to all the fallacies of questionnaire data, and I'm sure you can think of lots of, of those as well.、Uh, but let's take a look at how we might do this. First of all, let's make a hypothesis. We're going to hypothesize that people who attend Religious、uh, services weekly are happier than people who attend religious services monthly or, or yearly, or never. And in fact, let's do that extreme. Let's compare those and make the statement the hypothesis will be people who attend religious services weekly will report being very happy much more often than people who never attend religious services. So we collect our data, we put it in a cross tab. Let me show you how to read this cross tab table. We have a table with columns. Going down this way. And this is always considered the independent variable or cause variable in、um, cross tab data. Now, I said cause variable, and keep in mind we're using association data. It's the assumption that attending religious, religious services is somehow connected to helping people be happier. It is not proven that that's cause and effect. We need to keep that in mind. And、so, we have the column of never attend religious services. Notice columns like columns in front of a church or、uh, in front of a bank building. Monthly or yearly, and I've left those blank for a reason I'll explain here in a moment. And a column of weekly attending religious services. We have rows, which are always considered the dependent variable across tab data or the result variable. And this is very happy across here, pretty happy, which I left blank for our purposes. I'll tell you why in a minute. And not too happy across here. So, we have the hypothesis already stated. Now, let's read it. If we compare cell A to cell B, and for our purposes, notice I'm just leaving the middle cell out. In real statistical analysis, we would look at those middle cells quite closely, but that's not what our purpose is here. We find that 24.9% of the people who never attend church say they're very happy. Notice the order I just did that in. It wasn't 24% of the very happy say they never attend church. That's not what that data says. This is column data. Let me repeat. Remember the pause button on your DVD to get this right. 24.9% of those who never attend church say they're very happy. Now we compare that to cell B, which is 41.7% of the people who say they attend church weekly say they're very happy. So, so far, does that data agree with our hypothesis? That those who attend religious services weekly will say they're more, more happy? Absolutely, but we're not through. We now have cell C to compare to cell D. If this was low and this was high, for it to be consistent, this cell needs to be high and this cell needs to be low. And look what we have. Let's read this data 14.9% of the people who never attend church or synagogue or a mosque say they're not too happy. While 7.3%, a smaller percent, who attend church weekly say they're not too happy. Does cell C to D support our data? Absolutely. So now we know when we ask the question, the hypothesis,、uh, does the data support our hypothesis? What's our answer? Clearly it's yes. All right? But now we can't accept the hypothesis yet. What do we have to do? We have to say, is the p value, probability, 
what now? 0.05 or less. Well, let's look at our data. We've got a V value and a P value. Which one do we look at? Well, the P value is probability. So for our hypothesis testing, we look at that. And the answer is, yes, it's much less than 0.05. It's 0 0.000, meaning out of 1,000 studies, we would find this kind of relationship 1,000 times with no, no chance involved there. So does our data support the hypothesis? Yes. Is the p-value 0.05 or less? Yes. Therefore, we have no choice but what? We accept the hypothesis. We accept the hypothesis. Now notice, after we've accepted the hypothesis, we can go and look and say, what was the strength of the relationship? It's not an R value because it's not a scatter plot, it's a V value. The strength of the relationship is low moderate, which is 0.109. So there is a relationship, it's consistent and reliable, the probability tells us that. It supports uh, the hypothesis, and our probability is less than 0.05, so we have to accept our hypothesis. Therefore, we conclude that people who attend religious services on a weekly basis much more frequently report being very happy than those who never attend religious services. Now, why did I leave all this blank in here? Simply so it wasn't so confusing. We could look at all those numbers, and in, in an actual research study, we would, of course. But it's the extremes that help us compare this. Thank you.